Hello, hello, and a very good morning wherever you're watching us from. My name is Mukami Wambora. I'm filling in for Willis Raburu as we discuss relationships. Now, relationships is not my forte. In fact, my sister laughed when she found out I'll be leading the discussion. But the good thing is I have a lovely panel to guide me through this. And today's discussion, no money, no love. Want to hear from you as well. Our question for the day is why do some men have a problem dating a woman that makes more money than them? Use the hashtag Daybreak and we'll be sampling some of your views in the show. Let me introduce my lovely panel. We have non Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've been practicing the whole time. She's a publicist. Then we have Radio Citizens Shatter Boy with wow, us boy. as well. Yeah, man. And CJ Atemo. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Welcome, guys. All so, right. I'll start ladies first. Um, why don't you tell us why, like, how big of a factor is money in relationships today? It's not just in relationships. It's in everything. No money, no nothing. Like, who can survive in this? No, nowhere. If you don't have money, you literally can't live. So, it's just that um, uh, it comes to love. It's, I mean... No money, no nothing. We can't literally live without money. So even in love or in relationship, it's one of the factors, but it needs to be well discussed because, I don't know, maybe coach can back me up on this. I don't know if I'm right, but according to research, majority of let's say marriages and relationship, the, the split is not even because of what we think, cheating. It's because of finances. Well, it's a huge part. It's, it's one of the largest factors when it comes to uh, marriages dissolving or relationships dissolving. Um, because people don't quite communicate well when it comes to money. It's not really a money factor. It's mostly the view that people have towards money, their attitude towards money, and their ability to communicate or the inability to communicate about money. Um, and sometimes it's a bit uncomfortable for some people to talk about that. Uh, the various roles that people play when it comes to money in a relationship, I think it's just a matter of how the two people would be open to each other. But money is a huge factor. Yeah. Shut up, boy. Yeah, in your dating life, yes. from when you started out as a hustler, as you've been going up the scale, how has dating changed? Have you now started more women in gang DM, DMing you and stuff? Sasa if wakianza kuna DM saa hii itakuwa ni juu ya do. Sasa hizo sitajibu. But that said, I think money is a factor in relationships. Lakini it is the boy child's man that is the factor. Sasa do ya boy child ndio factor in the sense that kama boy child ana do saa hii hauna mapenzi. In fact, someone was saying love ni kama token za stima saa hii. But pesa yako ikiisha unabaki kwa blackout for the boy child. <laughs> that is the biggest problem we have. You utaenda ku date them leo kama una dua kusikiliza. They won't listen to you if you don't have money. Si ndo pressure bocha. You're nodding your head. I'm like, oh, it's 50-50. It's because uh, women will love stability. I want to look at you and imagine you can be able to take care of me or you have tendencies. There are signs. Can't you see potential? That no, actually, that's another thing I want to say. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to look like, you don't have to have the money there and then. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You need to look like you have a sense of being able to take care of me. If I'm coming to your left, to let me tell you, love will never parent. Eh, eh, I'm wezi ka hapo, mkando, then <laughs> at the end of the month you tell the landlord, eh, hey, manzi, here you love each other. Paying, it doesn't work like that. Lakini kwa ni lazima pesa ya bochel do liberant. But you see, both that's another you, thing. Both of you can bring money a on the table. Coach is saying communication. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> coach, what happened back in the day, like our parents' time, they used to start dating when they don't have money, they build each other, and then that's how the relationship progressed. How has it changed in our culture? And what are some of the factors behind that? It has changed because we are more aware of uh, what we'd call a better lifestyle. Uh, people have greater aspirations right now. In the past, all somebody wanted to have is a family. And the family was part of a larger community. So a woman would want to get married, move from her parents' home to go to the husband's home, and she would know she would be catered for. 
in a sense, the economic realities of that time and now are a bit different because we have more people pushing their way into the urban areas, trying to scale the career ladders. They want to go farther. They want to get more. They want to live better. So the pressure now, the economic pressure now, is greater than it was before. The simplicity that our parents had uh, is a bit lost right now. Everybody feels they can go for it. And, and you see, today, the girl will not wait for the man to go and work and then come and marry them because she can also go out and get it. So if a man, if Shata is going to meet a lady who is already paying for her mortgage in Kileleshua, mm -hmm. now he's going to be challenged because traditionally the man would provide. So he'll be challenged because then he begins to ask himself, what is my role? in this woman's life. She already seems like she's got her house, she's paying for her house, she's bought her car. So he will feel displaced by the fact that his traditional role is already challenged. So it's sort of a catch-22. It's like, yeah. it's a catch-22. If the woman is making more money, you're intimidated. If it's all on the boy child, you're like, why, why, would, they, why would they date me? displaced. Yeah, displaced, no problem with my responsibilities, come out to share. But you know, you are, the pressure that will come with a woman that is making more money than you is if that money she's making high trickle down kwa family. Kama ni yako peke inatumika na yake itumiki, ndiyo pressure inakuja in life. But if she's making more money and you're making money, but muna kuja, muna share, muna agree, you'll do this, I'll do this, there can't be pressure. But if she says, pesa yake ni yake, highly parent, and you, you have, Pesa kidogo kumliko and you have, to, you have to do everything else. Na ye do yake yonona aki develop watu wao. Na we watu wengi yonona kuangalia yonona shanga what is wrong with you. Hapo ndo pressure na anzi. Now we're joined by DNG on Skype. I want him to chime in on the conversation. You've heard what Shata Boy is saying. Is all of the responsibility on the boy child when it comes to money in relationships? First of all, most good morning. <laughs> Glad to be here. So, uh, first of all, I think, yo, Money only matters if you're in Kileleshwa, Kilimani, and maybe a little bit of Alingam into La Vima. Because if you consider these are the, the Chiles who are being liquid rent by dudes, these are the Chiles who perhaps they don't have Kazi, but they're living their life or they want to live their life. That's where money becomes a problem. If you look at it in the slum, um, Dani Manze, Uko doing Ausikanam Nagani, Uko ni you know, even in Kakuma camp, you find people in relationships, in marriages, they're having children. Those are refugees. So how can you tell me that money there matters? It's not a universal doctrine. I think money only matters to women who are looking to step up that uh, class ladder, move from point A to B. That's where it becomes a fact. If a woman is confident in herself, really, at what point does she need the money? Yeah, wow. interesting point from, from DNG. Like, Shata Boy, why are you dating the women who want money? You think there are not women who don't want money? <laughs> you're saying th those simplicity relationships um, CJ was talking about, you can find them mm -hmm. in the slums and other areas. Why are you looking for those? Uh, what are you, you, you wouldn't know. Love does not choose. Love does not say who you're going to do. You, you, you get in it, then realize actually. Then you move to another one, the same thing happens. <laughs> You move to another <laughs> one, the same thing happens. We have lost. Who yeah. doesn't love money? You, <laughs> Who doesn't see, love money? But Even the men. When, when you, of course, everyone loves yeah. money. And it is a good thing to love money. But when you make money your master, the problem starts there. Um, money is a good slave. But men look for the slay queens, the ones who are looking nice, dressing nice. So, of course, when you meet them, you have to maintain their lifestyle. Uh, slay queens look you for go men. look for the same thing. <laughs> <That's laughs> the other way around. Slay queens uh, look no, for they men. look for each other. Uh, uh, they look for each other. There's will, an environment. Well, you see, if you bait yourself, <laughs> For me, if you bait yourself for me, and I come start talking to you, why are you there and, to and, be baited? And, and, and I start thinking <laughs> I followed you, yet you baited yourself. Why are you it, there it, to be baited? Because that is what you're looking <laughs> for, and you know to to to, to catch me. <laughs> All I'm saying is, whether you're in the slums or wherever you are, is yeah. nobody doesn't want better. Right. Nobody doesn't want better. I think it's a matter of like the way our coach here told us: communicate from the word go. And, it, and you, sh you see the thing, it's okay to want better. It's okay to want to drive a good car. It's okay to want the better life than your mother had or where you're born. Simply because I'm born in the village or I'm born in the... It doesn't mean I stay there. That's why we strive to be better. Just say, 
what what afutane and i said this last time me if i want a bmw akishata if you're giving me a toyota just stay there with your toyota you will get someone who wants your toyota me let me do for the one who will give me a bmw it's fine what what afutane kama ni kujengana jenganeni from scratch tumeamua sisi tunataka kununua ka plot tushikane tununue ka plot but don't look for someone who wants this and they can't give them and you start frustrating them and each other now have any of you dated um a partner who does not work i want to hear about mm -hmm. that where you're the only one who's earning the money in the relationship and they're not working maybe dng you can try <laughs> <laughs> maybe job loss i love loving, loving the conversation i think first we need to consider that um, the problem is not whether somebody wants money or not. I think we are all we are all uh, about self-preservation and growth, and we all want to to grow, and and we are all aspirational beings, right? But the challenge is where somebody wants free peace. That's where the problem begins. And if you look at our nation and that generation as young people, we are a free bee generation. We want handouts from MPs, we want handouts from everybody. So when you date somebody, you think this is your father. I'd like to tell all women watching in and tuning into this broadcast that. When you are dating a man, do not look for a parent. This is not your father. This is not some, somebody supposed to be in care of you. Apana. Baba yako, you are not to pay pesa. Mwanume wako, you are not to Let us then put us uh, <laughs> in the sun, Tafadalini. Let us not get mixed up. Love should be separated from provision. Thank you. That is my opinion. But, and, okay. Yes. Coach is laughing. Right, yeah, I'm laughing because I wanted to rein in on the first thing that, uh, that DNG said. Um, if you remember a few years ago, there were cases of women who were prostituting to fishermen just for them to get food. So this is not anything to do with the social economic class. It's not about Kilimani. It's not about Kilaleshur. It happens in the villages. It will happen mm -hmm. even in those refugee camps. You will find that there are people who will be selling their bodies just to try and take care of themselves. If there's somebody who will come in, uh, either from the city or anywhere else, and they've got a bit more money to give them, that happens a lot. There's a lot of abuse uh, in such cases because everybody wants better. So that's not just a Kilimani thing. And I think that even the people that we would call the Kilimani people, uh, I think a lot of them didn't grow up in Kilimani. They walked their way from Eastlands <laughs> to Kilimani. <laughs> uh, but then again, I think when, when two people are in love, they've got to set the rules for themselves. Like we cannot come in with strong positions and say, I cannot do this or I will not do this because every relationship is very unique. Uh, you could be dating somebody who's not working, but they're playing other roles in ensuring that you make money. Mm. You could be married to somebody, we talked about that before, that you could be married to somebody who's a stay-at-home uh, wife, but then she's enabling you to go out and work because they're giving you the peace of mind, they're taking care of all the other things that you wouldn't take care of, that if they were not at home, you probably would have to split your time before your home and your work. It's, it's, whole, it's a whole matter of understanding the roles that the both of you would play in the team that you are in. Mm. Interesting comments there. Shutter Boy, mm -hmm. from what you're discussing, what's your ideal relationship? What would you want from the woman you're dating? I generally just want people to avoid shortcuts. Let me tell you, <laughs> the reason as to why money is a factor in relationships right now is because we want shortcuts. People don't want to follow the process. Unotaka you see the moment we say the moment money started commanding respect from everyone you see, if you are a last born in a family and it is you that has money you command respect people <laughs> listen to you than the, than the, than your elder brothers you speak and they follow <laughs> because you have money you see so at the society when a woman has money more money than me she will think she does not need me she, that is the problem money has become a master you have money, you don't need a man. And a man comes on board thinking, okay, now she has money, what do I bring? Ina kwa mlima ingine. Unaanza kufil, I'm not the man here. I can't even talk when I need to talk. I can't say this, I can't do this. Unaelewa? But for me, an ideal uh, situ uh, relationship is for people to stop looking at what they can see in a relationship. Like, I am seeing this, there's money here. I'll go for it. 
people need to be. Just look at what your parents used to do. They grew up together. Like your mom would make your dad this, your dad would make your mom this. Not your mom did just find your dad like this and now they lived like that. No, it was a journey. These people built each other. Right now, no one wants to build the other. You just want to come as a package. Yo, I'm like this, you're like that. Okay, let's do this. That is the problem. <laughs> I, I'm just laughing because I remember there's a joke that was seen going around. In the village, if you don't have money or in a family, but yeah, even in the village, it's it's one of those where you still look for the richest person in the village. Mm -hmm. The women yeah. still look for the richest person but in the village. But having said that, I think and I would want to emphasize this with coach, it's the attitude that we have towards money. And if you start digging deeper into finances and how you relate with money, you realize that most of us have a very bad attitude towards money. And we see money as this tool that you can use maybe to manipulate or you want it because when I have money, I have power and no one can tell me anything. Which, well, it's, that's how it has been portrayed to be because even if we look at the state of, I mean, most countries, if people have money, they have the power. But there's no time that money will ever substitute for a partner. True. Never. As much as we are looking for it, as much we will end over. Me like me, I don't like poverty. I don't like suffering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no time that money will ever substitute for a human being. That human touch connection, I don't think so. I think there's the a, there's a issue of... Uh, who makes the money, and then there's also the issue of who manages the money. Sometimes the person who doesn't make as much money is a better manager. Mm -hmm. Again, that is why it comes to the place of the two people communicating, understanding each other. But would the person who makes more money allow the person who doesn't make more money they to would. manage the money? They would, because, I mean, people employ accountants, people employ lawyers, people employ uh, managers just to run the various aspects of their lives. Uh, I don't think it would be a problem to allow your partner to do that as long as you feel <laughs> that they're watching out for your interest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You said you like money. You like. Yeah, I love. You want Actually, comfort. Not like you love money. Yeah, I and love you money. want comfort. <laughs> now, let's say you you get a partner. Yeah. You guys fall in love. He's doing really well at the time you meet him, mm. and then he loses his job. Yeah. What next in such a situation? Um, I, I don't believe in leaving people because they've lost their job. Anybody can lose a job. Even I would lose a job. And if this is someone I would want to settle down with, and I'm serious at that point, why not hold them down, you know? But there's a display. Even if the caliber of your lifestyle goes down. You see, when in such a situation, what happens is if, there, if you're settled or you start, have started merging your incomes, you sit down and evaluate, hey, what do we need to cut down? What if we had loans, what do we go and talk to banks so that we can arrange I mean, how we can pay these loans. Because I'm figuring out, by the time you guys are together, you have, you have talked about through these things. Because people, people don't talk through these things. Yeah, Coach, how often is that? You know the people, people who don't you talk can about look, Yeah, they don't, you don't know how much money is in the other person's bank account. You guys, you just come together. Like, how open are people in relationships not. that they even reveal oh. their finances? No, they are not open. Yeah. Yeah. Like our accounts <laughs> you, know, in the <laughs> you see what I talked about, the attitude towards money and our relationship with money. You can imagine that this is somebody that you give your body to. But then you were scared of them knowing how much you have. I mean, Apple how, <laughs> <laughs> how warped us. is that kind of thinking? <laughs> how warped is that kind of thinking that you can undress before this person, give your body, probably even by the third day you've met them, because this generation doesn't wait. You know, by the second uh, sleepover, <laughs> you're giving your body. But then look at how people make money a secret. 
that somebody will be with somebody like for seven years and they don't know their financial dealings. Um, that's, that's idolatry in a sense, <laughs> like you're idolizing this thing. So I think that the money conversation, why it becomes hard is our attitudes towards it. It's, it's our myths around it. Some of those are traditional beliefs, some of those are socialization, some of them are because you, know, you never had your parents be open about things like money. You were not taught to be open about it. You were told your money is your money, keep it. You know, everything about your money is supposed to be a secret. Parents die before their children even know what property they have. Uh, they never train their children to take over their inheritance because this money thing is a taboo. It needs to come in early. Uh, people need to have that conversation very early. Like when you're talking about who's paying for the coffee, you need to start. Are we going Dutch? <laughs> yeah, you start talking about we... those conversations again. Yeah. Let me bring DNG in. For you, in the relationships you've had, or in general, how soon into that relationship do you reveal your finances, if at all? Yani for me, let me say, well, first and foremost, hey, if you find a woman who is materialistic, disperse. <laughs> yani run away. <laughs> What is, ma what is what is what, yeah, what is material <laughs> define materialistic? materialistic woman is a woman who is all about tombs, 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 man. Yani, kwa nyumba kila kitu tunazungumzia ni pesa, 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 baby, my hair, baby, my 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 nails, baby, my waxing. Ay. But if you saw her doing her nails, she will fell in love with her yeah. nails, uh, nails, and her hair, nails. Nice. And, 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 so why she they start doing your nails then? We cannot politicize relationships, but and if I'm, if I'm assisting you making that money for nails, why should we know? Should I not ask you for it? I've had a, an experience where I've been a woman who was all about truths, it was the downfall of our relationship. So, I'm talking about uh, experience because Babugani. For me, I'm a hustler. You know, I'm a businessman from ground zero to where I am today. You know, step by step. And money is made. Uh, it's a journey. I like somebody, what somebody said earlier. It's a journey. But somebody here is, is coming to take, take, take. What are they contributing? Mtu ata. I don't contribute anything. I don't contribute anything. I don't want I keep saying this word everywhere I go. Relationships need to be redefined. In this society we've grown and we are living in, a man is a provider. You see? That is what you grow. Ukijua, I am a provider. Nadem, hana sense of your responsibility ya provide. Sawa, sawa. That is why when you are... Leo unezenda kuongea nadem yako, muulize pay slip yake, akulize, what do you want with my money? Na anajua pay slip yako. Okay, and if you don't disclose your pay slip, it becomes a problem. But for her, it is okay for her not to. And if you ask people around you, they be like, "Untakani na pesa adem." You see, even your peers would be like, "Where wacha hizo?" Na rafikiza ke piyata mambia i pesa ako fai kumambia ningapi. You see, that is the problem. It needs. You see, when that used to happen, a girl child was disadvantaged because akuwa na patio zile privileges boy child akuwa nazo. But right now, we are on an equal platform. We are making the that, same money. That's, that's, that's stretching it. We are not a... But, we but we yeah. are yeah. Really yeah. That's, okay. a, yeah. Yeah, that's a real so stretch. So but where we are right now... Let me back you up. Kama ni do, we are to make do the same. Kama tuko utrafanya yeah. kazi same na yeye, yeah. yeah. sipayu pesa mingi kumliko because I'm a man. Sawa, so, sawa. So, that is what I'm saying. So imagine I'm living with her. We're earning the same, but I don't, I don't know her pay slip. She won't bring it on, on the table to kika konyumba tuonge. Isn't that pressure on I me? If Let we me ever <coughs> separate, <coughs> yeah, I'm back in to to me at What happens to me? So, you, let's assume you're not living with me, you're married. So that's another thing. <laughs> By the time you are, you want to disclose your finances. Please demystify that relationship you have with that man. Don't start, oh, now we can build this together. And you've not seen a certificate whether you're married or not. Then you build a whole empire. And then afterwards, I could say, no way. You know, even if you have children, doesn't identify that we are married. That having said that, there is unity when you put everything together. There's unity in strength. It's only that we have painted, and I know women will beat me with stones for this. We have painted <laughs> scenarios where, fine, bibi na faa kuwa na ka account. Sisi bisi kuwa na kale ka account. Sasa kukiwa kubaya, fine, nitatoa pesa. You know, nitatoa, nitatoa za chama. 
But if there's a way people, because many people that I've seen build themselves together from the couples that you look up to, they've put, this unity when you put finances together, when you say, okay, you do this, you do that. We are working towards a common goal, which would, in real sense would be a very nice ideal situation if both of you are on the same page. I, I, I mean, I don't know what, <laughs> what you'd say about that. You know, I, I, um, I agree with Shetterboy that things have changed. But again, I will say this that every woman needs to have some miscellaneous money. Um, to be honest, it will not work if you tell a woman to bring all her money to the table because then she feels she has to keep on coming back to ask for a lot of little, little expenditure, um, which they're very uncomfortable with. Uh, Shutterboy is looking at me. Yeah, it's <laughs> But you <laughs> okay, see, you maybe yeah. your hair also. You see, so generally, you understand the, the board, generally, the man, no matter what happens, the man will still be the caregiver in many ways. So finances is just a part of this. It's not the whole thing. He's still the caregiver. Um, he's still the protector. He's still the shelter over this woman over here. So the finances is just a part of it. That's why we have to debunk the myth of money as being something that is taboo we have to make it a very casual relationship. Why? Because at your workplace, there are people who know how much you earn. The person who pays the salary, the person who determines your salary, all of these people know it. Why would it be a secret to your partner? And that is the same even for the ladies. Like, mm. why would a lady keep it a secret? And yet, the person who pays you knows, your banker knows how much you're being paid. There are quite a number of people who know how much you're being paid. So why would it be a secret to your partner? The thing is to sit at the table and say, look, uh, this is how much I make. I, I get 50K, but then I want to bring in this amount to the table and I would like you to leave me with this yeah. for the things that I need to do. If there is that understanding, it should not be a problem. Uh, I don't think that any good or genuine partner would want to leave their other partner at a disadvantage. It's just openly talking and saying, because I've got these other things that I would also like to do. Allow me to keep this. It's conversations, conversations, conversations. Mm. But what about the reverse chatter boy? Would you be okay to be in a relationship no. where the woman is making all the money because you're complaining being the provider? What if the roles are reversed? How, how would you handle that? Thank you. <laughs> I don't think one is comfortable in that situation. In fact, they would sabotage that relationship because of the society we live in. That man will be scolded and looked down upon at every turn they make. That is the word. You get, he, he will not have a voice. That man would rather uh, because society bills you see if you could change the conversation to, a, to an extent that people would know that check I had a job my job is gone now my woman is, is earning she can take care of our bills and it is okay if that happens and the conversation changes to a boy child to understand that is not pressure I think we would move forward okay, right let's now right now at Apple right now to if you don't have money as a, as a man where was your woman <laughs> okay, let's let's read some comments on Twitter. Um, we have Barnabas Moyo who says, masculinity norms discourage men from being vulnerable. When a woman makes more, it has the potential to damage your self-esteem and self-worth. The norm suggests that a man should be the breadwinner. We adhere to the belief that men sh must be able to provide financially. So exactly what you were saying. Then we have... Um, Isaac the Great, he says, this thinking of no money, no love has made relationships to be commercialized. Someone selling a service to the highest bidder. These, at the long run, gives men entitlement because of the investment that they have done to the lady, which now brews conflicts. Then ladies manipulate men with sex. I think nonsense, you can talk a bit about that, that whole entitlement that men get. Once now they've invested money in you, they've bought for you that... That car, that BMW mm, that, you that, you bought from, that you were talking about. <laughs> and now you must do everything um, that they ask. Is there a sense of that in such relationships? Also, if you invest... It's so if like the power, yeah. yeah. That yeah. men are now entitled, feel more entitled to you because they have provided for you all of yeah, those things. Yeah, it's a things. thing of money and power. So if I'm doing this, see, I've danced to your tune. Then imagine if I cough, 
kunaitika. I think there's, that's the that's that's how people have 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 painted it, or that's how it is. Which I don't. Again, a woman is meant to be taken care of, and the needs of a woman are many. Yani, let me tell you. Our, as in, even our bills for the month, we can never sit down and have the same bills. To be taken care of in the issue. Why? See, you are making money. I don't have a problem. You see, I don't have a problem mm -hmm. taking care of myself, but I want. I don't know if. I, now I'm about to go into my mother tongue. I want to be assisted. Fine, I have. I have 5,000. Please, could you add? <laughs> I have, because that's what, how you will feel useful. Because if. if, yeah? if yes. <laughs> and Atemo will back me up. <laughs> if, you start, if you start doing everything for yourself and you're not asking for any help, that man will start asking questions. Mm. Am I right? That's true. Uh, that's, uh, that's the displacement that I talked about yeah. initially. Uh, but the question she earlier asked on. Uh, you know, the disadvantage. Would a man want to be in a relationship where the woman makes all the money? Some men, yes. There's still some men who are comfortable doing that, and there are quite a number of, you know, there are a lot of people. But are they faithful to that yes. one woman who's making all the money, or are, do no. they then become the bank account, and then now they use that money they receive to, to, <laughs> to now take care of the other yes. women that you they You see, one have. of the challenges that we have today one of the challenges is that we have a lot of suspicion in relationships. Mm. Just the same thing she's saying that if the woman pays for all her bills, the man will begin asking questions. We have this trust issue that then we carry it into money. That if the woman is bringing in all the money and the man has no job, then the woman thinks that the money I'm giving him is going with it to another woman. Or if the woman can take care of herself, then the man will be thinking there's another man. These are trust issues. They are not really truths. And if two people, if you know your partner, you can have a very faithful partner, but he's just lazy. He can be, his, his uh, <laughs> virtue may be he's very faithful, but then he may have the vice of being very lazy. Mostly you'll not get everything in one person sometimes. <laughs> it's unfair to even ask. <laughs> <laughs> then you can find one who is very hardworking, but they're not faithful. They are making the money, they're bringing the money as well, but they're not faithful. You've got to know your partner. You cannot generalize. You've got to know your partner. You can't use what you get in the various groups, in the men's talk or the girls' groups, and then bring it to somebody. It would be very unfair for you to begin judging your man based on the experiences of your girlfriends or to begin judging your woman based on what the boys are saying. It would be very unfair to do that. Now, let me bring in DNG. Would you date a woman who is making more money than you? Or have you? Maybe you already have. Two answers to that question. Currently, you know, it would be interesting to date a woman with money, you know, as I mean today, where we're rich in life. In the past, it would be a disaster. I'll give you an example. Once I dated a, a daughter of a prominent politician, Kitambo Sama. <laughs> I was in university. So... This mama bana would drive, she'd come see me where I'm at with Danny, but when it come, comes to time for dates, Nini, they meet me in this place, we uh, Alfajiri, hey, 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 oh my God, Sina hata Ferrari, Nime Tomeka Tomeka, Nime Chanikiwa Chanikiwa. So obviously that was a mismatched relationship. It's also dangerous to, you know, uh, to date a woman who perhaps uh, loves this tombs too much because Kukika Ukiwa, as a man, older to Rokwa. And we've seen that even in recent times in, in media. I know you see you, you guys have been highlighting this scenario of this prominent artist who Bibiaka uh, Litok, Akamwacha, Akendea, Chalimunina, Mbaya Kona Pesa. You know what I'm saying? So that is the reality of all these women who love money, love money, love money. Those are bad <laughs> women. You know, in, as hustle as we say, Kona Principle, Mwanamke Mpenda Pesa, Hawezi Jenga Nyumba. So if you're looking for a good time, that woman is okay. But if you're looking for something long term, avoid, avoid completely. Look for somebody humble. Look for somebody that's what is good. humility? I am I'm offended, DNT. What is humility? <laughs> why, why? <laughs> uh -uh. You can't say that because, we, and this is the thing, Aki, and I know women who are watching. Oh, she's a humble woman. If I'm ambitious, no, I'm not humble. <laughs> if I want to, to make better strides and get my PhD, and it's okay, leave me, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> but, but I think the NGM may say my in, respe in respect to money. I may say if a woman loves money, 
she's in a relationship because of money. You see, that one you run my away love, from. How do you tell? How my do you love tell? for fine life. My love for fine life. Why am I being punished? Love really? what you can provide for if yourself. If I can, if I'm working see, towards what, what, it, what, and if I have a goal towards it, uh -huh. why should I be punished? Then, as long as you are on that goal and working towards it, you should not pressure a boy child to to give you. What if I'm what pressuring you, you to become better? We no, become no, no. better uh, together. Uh, we have enough pressures in this life. No. You <laughs> adding on to the pressure. So if you, if you get an, problem, if you get an ambitious woman, it's a problem. No, if you get a look, lazy one, it's ambitious, a problem. You want <laughs> there, there, there is a difference between ambition and pressure. You see, if you're pressuring me to give you what I can't afford and what you can't afford for yourself, now that is pressure. No, that is not ambition. Listen, here is the thing. If <laughs> I want what I want, and mm -hmm. I, I don't have it now, but I'm yes. working towards it. I love a fine life. I don't have a problem with that. And I'm telling you, Shata, let's do this. Let's strategize. Let's target for that client, and mm -hmm. we make better so that we can go there. Where am I being Sour. punished? Now we are two in this relationship, Cindy. Eh. This is what you want. Yes. You want us to work towards what you want, Cindy. No, no, no. What, what about what I want? Where, I have no work problem. Work <laughs> when do you work towards hey, what coach, I want? Hey, coach, coach this relationship. <laughs> These guys are perfect. I'm so glad I'm sitting on this side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm sitting on this side because they're actually acting like a couple. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's treat this as relationship therapy. How would you advise this couple over here? You see, they've, they've got to come up with, uh, with a common goal. So there's what Nonsis is saying, that this is what I want. Then there's what Shata is saying, that this is what I want. It's a common challenge, actually, because sometimes you find the woman is working so hard. She wants a certain kind of a life, and she's willing to put in the money. Then the man is feeling I'm not comfortable with that because I want us to live a life where I can sustain us. You know, where if he's earning less, then he feels like we need to move into a house that I can pay. The woman is feeling like, but I've got the money, we can pay a higher house. The man will feel, I don't want to come into a house that you're paying. It's a common kind of thing that comes up. Again, it will come to the place of where are the two of you trying to go? This is, this is where relationships must begin with a destination. That's true. <laughs> it must begin with a destination. If you don't have a common destination that you're going to, um, <laughs> you can board the same vehicle. So many people come uh, into the common vehicle that is called a relationship or a marriage or something. They get in there, then one person is like, I was going to Mombasa. The other one is like, look, <laughs> I want to go to Mombasa. let's go <laughs> to Malindi. As we, as we, as, and I've noticed, as you grow older, you change and you're allowed to change and to, I don't know if on the same page, but you... Some people change faster. Yeah, you change, and then you're like, oh, I could achieve this. I could yeah. get better. Yeah. I think I had set my bar lower. I mm. think I can achieve this. Then the other person remains stagnant. Mm. <laughs> now, usually at that particular point, it's usually very difficult if one partner is not growing at the rate that the other partner is growing. It could be either. It could be the man is growing very fast. Uh, socially, mentally, he's growing in scope. He's beginning to see visions of things that he can do. And then probably the wife is not. She begins feeling left out. Mm. So it is up to the person that is growing to try and pull the other person that is um. not. Well, the, other, the flip side is that you may have a partner who is not willing go up to go up with you ah. they were comfortable with where you are uh, they are not they're not comfortable yeah. with going to the next level uh, so so what happens in those situations at that particular you will. Kwa mata, mimi ni enda, ni <laughs> that is what that is what they will do yeah. what do you in, want in, them in to do yeah, yeah, what that I, is what why they should they slow down see, <laughs> ata ukiwa, ukiwa ambia, lazima tu ambia ukweli in these relationships kama ni husband na wife around. It is the wife that is growing, though you're saying, and the, uh, the husband is stagnant. She will not turn back to pull his hand. No, I will imagine she will I would. No, no, no. If I but try it to. Is for the, because why? Society won't judge her. They will say the man was lazy. That is what they will say. But if you are a man and you grow and don't pull her, they will say, Uli Omoko. I'll tell you one case, shut up. There's a lady who was more educated than their husband. Uh, so they used to have this business and whenever they would go into boardrooms with their clients, uh, she would feel that the husband was very intimidated. And they were beginning to have an issue around that. So I say to her, why don't you give him your ideas, all your brilliant ideas, give him your ideas. Okay. When you get into the boardroom, let him be the one who shares them. You will still have brought your ideas, but yeah. there's a way you will have covered for him. Then begin to affirm him in the morning when he wakes up, he's dressed up, tell him, 
you've dressed up well or choose for him what to wear. And I can tell you that it did build a man's esteem. So I don't think that every woman will leave a man because she's growing. We, we must stop stereotyping. Look well you do. Lakini for example, uh, actually Shatter like Boy, someone man. seems to agree with you yeah? on Twitter. And Jorge Jr. is like, I agree with Shatter Boy that what counts in the is the boy child's cash. There are few girls outside who can look for love for the little you have. Ukiwa broke. <laughs> we have seen situations of well. ladies but who have see, built, what, what, I mean, you've grown what, together with, uh, with uh, someone. Uh, 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 what what Pasi has said about the, the uh, that madam, when mm. he had ideas, I, want, I wish the society would change the narrative for a boy child. If it is okay when you sit here and your woman gives those ideas, that's my wife, yo. Yes. I wifed her. See, but society <laughs> starts <laughs> with you. Society now society won't do that. Society, you. society now, society <laughs> will, will judge you. you, will tell you, and we are not going to be able to figure it But but why would you let the wife? And what's wrong? My wife is giving those ideas. I am proud, and I I hold her hand, and we live. Saying yo, umewa. But now, mm. Nasha, I wish truth. you're not living for the society. <laughs> so we are the society. Boy. We can change the society. <laughs> what's your ideal? <laughs> as we wind up, what's your ideal relationship? You, you can tell me. Then also, I want to hear from Non Cizi. An ideal relationship, as it stands right now, I think we we need to delink a lot of things from a relationship. Okay, the basis of a, the base of a relationship has always been love and it should remain love. If we change it to something else that is perishable or something else that can be taken away in a, in a fraction, then that is no longer love. Non -seasy. I remember a friend of mine, I won't mention it because a very, very prominent friend told me, you take control of any, every other aspect of your life, but sometimes, somehow we think that love life will shape itself somehow. Take control of your love life. And communicate. If you're growing at that PC, hey, me, hey, by the time you're marrying me or by the time we're starting together, I hadn't thought I can achieve this, but I think I'm at this point and I think I can get here. Do you really want to get here with me? Everything, if you communicate, you'll find yourself in a situation that, Aina, you're not wondering whether to go or not to go. Communication is everything and take charge, take control. Don't think somehow the Sijui, the heavens or the universe will work to and work this love thing out, take control and even write down what you want. That's the, what I would say. Thank you. Now, DNG, why Jimo. don't you give us your final comments, your ideal relationship when it comes to how you deal with money? Because, you know, I think uh, we should have and encourage relationships that uh, do not have pressure. Yeah, you know, look for a woman who is okay with where you are in life. Mm -hmm. You know, they come waiting for a job, but after they man up and a your job, uh, I'm a job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a digital chip. Yeah, <laughs> apart from that, you know, see as you know, I think uh, history of money, money, money is not a must. Uh, now money shall not be taken by force. You know, easy. Kitu ingine. Where for a woman who maybe wants the guy to provide, let me tell you, create a, an environment of love because where there's love thriving, the money shall flow. Ada kama ni shilingi kumi, utapewa. Lakini usilazimisha, atilazima angiritano, angiritano, wei wacha hizo. Ya muisho, cut your coat according to the size of your cloth. You know, usijaribu kutafuta de mambaye, sasa zake ni manaivasha, naivasha, na wewe. Dizi yako bado ijomo. <laughs> uh, thank you, DNG. Now, Coach, why don't you talk to people out there who are watching and they're in relationships and some of the biggest problems that they're going through are financial in nature. What would you advise them? Uh, you know, when you come together, as I said, the relationship must be on purpose. There has to be what the two of you are coming to do together. Uh, then money becomes a fuel to the vehicle of your purpose because there are people who fight just because they have money. It's not always the lack of money. It's That's not true. always the absence of money. <laughs> there are people who have money, then they don't know what to do with this money. 
if there is no clarity of purpose, there will be no direction. Decisions will be very difficult to make. Uh, but generally, again, our attitude towards money must be what we learned at the most basic level in school, that the definition of money is that it is a medium of exchange. It is not a destination in itself. It is just something that is supposed to help you live life, get what you need, go to the next stage, acquire something, pay for something. So you shouldn't have a relationship with money that is deeper than the relationship with your partner. I think we can end on that note. You shouldn't have a relationship with money that is deeper than your relationship with your partner. I've learned so much today. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for everyone who contributed on Twitter. And thank you for all of you watching at home. That's it from us here in studio. Have a good day.